And coach, we are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Miami Dolphins. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Rosen. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. That's pulled in at the 32. A very nice job on the run back there. He'll get 23 yards all told. And the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here first and 10. Complete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 27 yards there, a first down. Boy, the offensive line there, that was a thing of beauty to watch them block. I love that you give a little appreciation for those big guys up front and well-deserved. But how about the execution behind them? You can see the hours of practice that have gone into a great pocket by the running back. Quarterback puts it right in the perfect spot. Great mesh point by them. The timing on point. The run even better. You don't see that a ton, do you? The cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Ready? 
Ready. Dolphins Ready. bring Ready. on an extra Ready. defensive back on third down. Watch the twist. Watch the twist. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill, kill. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and ten. To throw is Rosen. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Right here, right here. They'll run here with Belage. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size and these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw on second and six, Rosen. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki, and it's third down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the shotgun, it's Rosen. And it's caught by Parker. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 34-yard line. With Devontae Parker, there was quite a bit of chatter in the offseason that the Dolphins might not pick up his fifth-year option, but they did. And one man who's certainly happy with that, quarterback Josh Rosen. It's a guy that Brian Flores, head coach of Miami, once around and in that locker room. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. He's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Rosen into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. 
It's the linebacker, Alex Anzalone, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Brings up second and four at the 36-yard line. Ready. The last run got six, six. now six. second and four. Sammy, Sammy. Man up, deep. Man up, deep. Now Breeze. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Here's Breeze to throw. And the pressure gets to him again. Raekwon McMillan, he's the one to get him this time and back-to-back -back sacks brings up fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Here's Rosen to throw. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack He's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? Third and long here for Rosa. And he finds Stills complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. On first down, Drake. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now it's the backup Fitzpatrick. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Cameron Jordan wreaking havoc with a sack. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Give the sack to David Onyemata, the product of Nigeria by way of Canada. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is fielded inside the five. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll try the right side with Murray. And a nice run to get this up over the 20-yard line. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Here's Bridgewater. And that will be incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. And it's second down. By the way, as we expected, most of the starting units out here in the second quarter. So get your two deep, your three deep, your four deep ready for this one. If you have a particular favorite who wasn't a high draft pick or is an undrafted free agent trying to make the team, this is the time to watch him play and give it his best shot because most of the starters, you're exactly right. They'll be out of the game watching the rest of the way. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Kayvon Webster on the defensive side able to get a hand in. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Hey, a sidebar worth noting is that preseason cuts have changed. So week three that we're in right now, the preseason, I think, what did you say, the roster's going to stay at 90 instead of going down to 75 this year? That's exactly right, Brandon, because in the past, just what you said, this game here at the end of week three or game three, 
you would cut your roster down to 75 and play game four just like that. In this case now, though, they're going to be able to keep guys all the way through. So guys who would normally not have a chance to finish out the preseason, they'll get that chance now and get more opportunities to get on tape. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Here's Murray. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Catch here, left side, Thomas. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. On first and 10, Bridgewater. He's going to go for a big play down. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. In for the score. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Man, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll run with Drake. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Well, Kenyon Drake, he was kind of underutilized last year when Adam Gase was head coach, only seven starts. But now he's going to get a chance under new head coach Brian Flores to really showcase his talent. He certainly flashed his diverse playmaking abilities a season ago. Nine touchdowns, five through the air, and four on the ground. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Yeah. 
A great blocking nearly sprung him there. 28-yard return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty. But it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Watch the shift. Bridgewater to throw it. His throw incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Third and long for Bridgewater. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Akeem Spence with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Fitzpatrick. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Cameron Jordan, his second sack of the night. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. reminder we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend flushed out right he's gonna run but he's got a long way to go and he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36 yard line a solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran but he's still short of the marker at its fourth Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Taking it about the 16. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Ready, 
The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Check 31, check 31. Under Bridgewater now. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. On third down, Bridgewater. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So we are halfway through here in the final week of the preseason as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. I got you. I got you. From the 44, Bridgewater. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Set, ready. 46 yards. Watch the run, watch the run. From the gun, Bridgewater. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. 
No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Check three, check three, check three. Watch the ass. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. And going deep for Hill. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Josh Hill, 30 yards. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Keep The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Running, it's great. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Let's set a tone, fellas. Let's set a tone. Fitzpatrick. This taken in by Jakeem Grant. And he'll take it down shy of 45 at the 46. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First down, Miami. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Here's Fitzpatrick. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Fitzpatrick now. Right back for Allen. This time he finds him complete. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 11 yards there. First down. That's something we didn't see much of from Allen the last couple of years in New England. Heck, last season, 13 games, only four targets. But Miami going to try to get him more involved in the passing game as we saw there. And you know he has the capability. You think back to 2012, breaking in with Indy. He had 45 catches that season. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Fitzpatrick again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Jakeem Grant. And that will bring up second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. To throw again, Fitzpatrick. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he's going to get it down to the 14-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. 
think it all came together there in breaking route drove it with excellent pace money throw right there to move the sticks This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. From the red zone now, Fitzpatrick. That's going to be caught at the ten-yard line. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now Drake. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's a run with Belage. And he is going to lose yardage here. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. From back at the four, here's second and goal. They'll stay on the ground. Barrage again. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. This is third and goal. Still looking for the first points of the game. Now Fitzpatrick. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Jakeem Grant there to make the grab. And the Dolphins are able to cut into this lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. They go for just one here as it's up and good. And that'll cut the lead to 17-7. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting, and the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we now he's hit, and Bridgewater loses the football. But fortunately, the Saints were able to hold on to it, so they will indeed keep possession. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because... This is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. had it defensively could have been a game changer there in the second half instead it's third down it's 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Sick guy! Check this guy! To throw, Bridgewater. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. It's taken to the 26. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. So a line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. On the give, this is Drake. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. No gain on the play. And it brings up third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints. They'll be looking to expand their lead here. They've got the football as we start the fourth. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They go with Murray again. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they doing? And down he goes. The pressure getting to Bridgewater. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Throwing Bridgewater. Harris has it over the middle. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. 
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Now Bridgewater. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Some good plays in the passing game right now for New Orleans. They have another first down. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this would have probably get away from them. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. And now it's second down. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. Ready, ready. So now second and ten ready, after the ready. incompletion on first down. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a gain that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. To the air again, Hill. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. He'll return it from the six. 12 yards on the return that time. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Marcus Davenport, the first rounder out of UTSA with a sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. After the sack on first down, Fitzpatrick. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Regular, regular. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Being chased out left. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain.
Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. On the return, Harris. That'll be a 49-yard punt, six yards there on the return. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Let's get it. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Here's Bridgewater. He's going to loft one deep left side here. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, New Orleans. Keith Kirkwood, 66 yards. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play, and just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well, because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Lutz good on the extra point, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with this deficit... You can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. And got his man complete! Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now Fitzpatrick. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Cameron Jordan bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. This is Harris. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here, first and 10. Quick hitter here, it's complete. 
Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Go on, go on. Watch the pass. On second and nine. Hill. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 yards there, first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Here's Hill. He'll let this go for the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. As his guys are in for six. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late. And now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is it bad blood that went into this one ahead of time? That maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. On second and nine, Fitzpatrick. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. To throw, Fitzpatrick. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. To throw is Fitzpatrick. Looking and finding Alan Hearns. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. 
Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. Deep ball, short ball, that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Fitzpatrick to throw for it on fourth down. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. He cannot wiggle free. They stop him at the line on fourth down. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Saints will have the football back. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got a plane to catch. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.